Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Today is Mother's Day, a special day for all mothers around the world that care and love and we definitely cherish. You know, flowers bloom during the spring and, and we even get to spend time with them. You know, even the, we even get to cook a breakfast or take them out to a special place, you know, for all mothers around. Because after all, they need their special time too. Just like how fathers want to have their special time for their kids and, and families. But yeah. that's going to be in, in June. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to review a family film that's dedicated to mothers around but it ain't going to be pretty, sadly. Um, it's a movie called Trading Mom. Yeah, with Sissy Spacek and Anna Chumsky, uh, best known for My Girl, along with the sequel. It's based on a book called The Mummy Market uh, by Nancy Brillis. And this is, of course, the first and only film that's written and directed by her daughter Tia. Um, it's simple. It's a story about three children who got fed up with their mom because she's always nagging all the time. So they get an advice by a gardener to actually show their way to a special place called the Mummy Market where they get to trade their mom to someone special. Someone that can actually take good care of them and do whatever they want. And I saw this movie as a kid. I never read the book. Maybe that's a good thing. I hated it. I hated it so much. It got me angry. Because I guess I could pretty much relate to the situation. Because sometimes my mom nags. See what this movie's doing to me already? And I'm just at the beginning. <laughs> um, it the movie just feels so mean spirited, very shallow, totally flat and lifeless. The characters were just poorly written, totally unlikable. Um, I know it's trying to be heartwarming and whimsical, you know, with moral lessons to be learned. I didn't really get that in the film until pretty much the last half of it. I know it's trying to be a harmless kids film, and it's fine. I mean, I love family films, okay? But not something that's really bad. And this one is really bad. I know, this is just the beginning I'm already getting to, but that's where I'm going to start reviewing right now. It stars uh, Sissy Spacek, best known for films like... Carrie, as well as Marie, Crimes of the Hearts, um, Cole's Miner's Daughter, among many others. She's a great actress, no doubt. And if Chumsky from My Girl, along with the sequel, and she's a great child actress, no doubt. Aaron Michael Mitchick, along with his brother Asher. Real Life Brothers, yeah. Maureen Stapleton has been in other works. Merit uh, Youngka, Andre the Giant in his final performance, sadly. Yeah, I'm going to explain that too. Sean McLaughlin, Jermar Jefferson, Nancy L. Chumsky. I believe she's the mother of Anna. Hard to believe. Now we got some real families here. Shostler Fisk, yes, real life a daughter of Sissy Spacex, and of course she went on to do the film S Snow Day, which I love, and David O'Neill. And it's written and directed by Tia Brillis. The movie begins somewhere in Richmond, Virginia, which I believe that's where the film was filmed. We meet the Martin family, including the three children. Elizabeth, Jeremy, and Harry, 
all played by Anna Chomsky, along with Aaron Michael Mitchick and Ashler Mitchick. Um, they're getting fed up by their workaholic mother, you know, Mrs. Martin, played by Sissy Spacek, just being completely bossy, doesn't spend time with the kids, always, you know, nagging them, giving them discipline and all, telling them to, you know, clean up their room, pick up their chores, do all this other stuff. She doesn't always have time to cook breakfast, like making pancakes and all, and sort of like that. Not only that, but this was their last day of school, getting ready for summer vacation, so that way they'd be able to have plans to actually go to summer camp or spend time with their friends at the mall or, you know, maybe, you know, play some games, you know, with their friends, that sort of thing. But next thing you know, um, they got into bigger trouble, such as Elizabeth getting caught by smoking a cigarette with her friends. And both Jeremy and Harry, you know, got a run in with the bullies and and Harry just punches a kid in the face, that sort of thing. So now they've been sent to the principal's office by Mr. Lebby that they settle an appointment to actually visit uh, Mrs. Martin. Also the fact that now they've been grounded for the entire summer. That they just couldn't take it anymore. So now they get their advice to a gardener named Mrs. Cavour, that's played by Maureen Stapleton. She's just going around, you know, doing her gardening, you know, growing some flowers, which leads to this um, particular twist because, you know, how in the spring, you know, all these flowers have bloomed, you know, like daisies and forget me nots or any certain names of flowers that you can choose. She tells them that um, there's actually a magical spell that can actually disappear their own mother so they can trade them to a, a local market called simply the Mummy Markets, which is a place um, just like any other market, you know, where you buy some food and all. Only this time, you get to go to this market, trade your mom. If you don't like this mother that you have, you can pick any mutter out there by using these tokens. So whatever mutter you choose, you'll be able to spend time with um, for the rest of your life. Like, And yes, once they got in there in this um, small alley, that's where we get to see like this entire place filled with mutters around, various mutters. Like you have a ninja mom, a video game mom, a cleaning mom, uh, <laughs> every single mother out there that they got that you can think of. So what they did, however, was they got the tokens, all free tokens, to for all these free kids to choose which mother that they want. So Elizabeth picks a French mom. That's interesting enough played by Sissy Spacek. So yes, in fact, Spacek plays uh, four woes. Not only will she play Mrs. Martin, but she gets to play like different kinds of mutters right there, but it's only the three mutters that they chose. So one is simply Mama, <laughs> a French lady, um, which they ride around in a limbo she actually, well, she she smokes a cigarette, well, and they even compare her to Corella de Bill from 101 Dalmatians, where they came to their house, they hired some maids and butlers and all to take care of the house. They go around cleaning the house, which unfortunately took uh, one of Elizabeth's uh, favorite shirt that she wanted so badly, and that is... Uh, the I Love New York shirt. You know, they tear it apart and start using it for cleaning and they even dump all these tadpoles into the toilets. See, I can't believe I'm actually describing this, but that's how I'm doing this in, in details here. So, they didn't care for their, mo their new mom and I mean they got, s they, they felt like this whole thing was a nightmare. 
they have to end up eating all these French foods and all that every day. So now, to make matters worse, they have to go to their secret uh, tree house so they, they can explain how they can find a way to get rid of her. Because they have to form their own pranks, such as having to take their pet iguana, they might go, and scare her off. She decided to go back to the mummy market along with uh, her maid and butler to because they're not working out together so now they have to go back get to their advice to Mrs. Cavord I mean because already they've been dressed up you know nicely and all they tell that you know the first mom didn't work out so they're just getting some more advice to her to find out about um, you know their first mistake um, of course uh, she also explains uh, to them about you know that if if you use this magical spell to erase everything it's going to create something completely dangerous because that means that you won't be able to get your mom back see that's well told here <laughs> so now they went back and they got another mom only this time it's an outdoor mom also played by Spacek well of course so they're just going around, you know, spending time, you know, because they figured this mom could actually love e the pet iguana and all this other stuff and all these fun activities that she loves to do. Jeremy did pick this mom and decided, well, this would be a, an awesome mom to choose. That's where she goes around, you know, taking them to to go camping, which I know that didn't work out very well. <laughs> You know, they're getting dealing with mosquito bites and and they're already getting stuck in mud or any other. The fact that even Jeremy was about to go to the restroom. I mean, yeah, they had to do a lot of exercise and all these activities. Um, which then Jeremy spots a, a bug because he was ready to take a dump and ran away and screamed. They had to sleep under sleeping bags, you know, dealing with all these mosquitoes and all. You know, and of course, I mean, she also loves to play basketball and or kickball or any other activities. But this mom somehow just drove them nuts. Um, it didn't seem to work this way, too, with kickball. They got tired of it. So now, what do they have to do? Well, once again, another advice by Mrs. Kabor. And, and that's when they, they're down with their last token. Since both Elizabeth and Jeremy had chose, you know, the two mothers and they were the horrible choices they took. Well, Harry decided to take his choice, which at this rate, at first he wanted the, the cooking mom. Or at this rate, the ninja mom. I would take the ninja mom instead. Or even the video game mom, too, where she was playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Or any other mom I would have chosen. Maybe an awesome mom. <laughs> but instead, he chose uh, the circus mom, which her name is Natasha. Yeah, a Russian uh, circus uh, entrepreneur type. Um, which, at this point on, that's where we got to meet all the circus performers around, including Andre the Giant as simply the giant. And... And poor Andre, I mean, not only was this his last film, but the way he's been treated in this movie, unbelievable. Because already, you know, they're just performing a circus act inside their entire house. And, um, and then somehow they just couldn't stand it. I mean, <laughs> there was even a scene where Andre was actually uh, throwing a knife at uh, Elizabeth, but just for the were part of the act, you know, and so they just couldn't take her anymore, and then at that point on, they decided to pull a prank on her, just like how they pulled a prank on, on the two moms that they chose, so what they did was, both Jeremy and Harry decided to drive the circus bus, and then Elizabeth just kicks Natasha and the rest of the circus performance out of the door, but both Jeremy and Harry 
they just drove as they can, you know, with Harry just pushing the brakes, and then suddenly they crashed into that curve until the giant arrived, and what do you know, Harry punches uh, the giant in the nuts. Unbelievable. So now, they just couldn't take it anymore. They, they decided to go back to Mommy Market. You know, and I feel bad for these moms, too. I really do, because these, these kids are just so spoiled. Unbelievable. Okay, I know. I've got to calm myself down here. And if this didn't get worse enough, of course, I mean, because this becomes a running gag, I mean, yes, the principal keeps showing up on the door because they have the appointment, but then he, he gets involved in all these uh, terrible um, gags here. And next we know, he's actually threatening them to, to call social service to actually have them remove and take them to a foster parents. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Since their mom's not going to show up at all, and the kids have been lying to him about that, saying that she went out. But in reality, she was gone. You know, the entire room was already empty. Like, like if someone moved <laughs> at the beginning. Okay, well, that's the case. So, they figured because they already spent all the tokens, life had to be learned here. Getting more advice by Mrs. Cavour. And so what did they do? They just go back to the mommy market. Decide to pull some pranks with all the other mothers around, joining in with the kids. And then, yeah, they just pull in their pet iguana, Michael, to scare them off. So that way they can go around stealing the tokens, so that way they'll find something better for them. But, of course, it was against the rules. They broke them. Yeah, you know, by this... Uh, the leader of the entire uh, place, which is a kid, a tall kid, telling them, you broke the rules, you will never come back. Ever. It doesn't matter if you steal all these tokens. You use them all. So now, they're already stuck in the alley. They're trying to go back. The whole place disappeared. Because they had made a lot of chaos over there. So now, the only wish that they had to make was they had to make the story up. Since they couldn't remember what their mom looks like and all. After all, I mean, they should have listened to Mrs. Kabor because that's exactly what she's been explaining to them. They're not very good listeners. Lessons learned here was that they had to try to pretend so they can remember their mom having to and this was probably the only heartwarming moment that I liked sadly was when they were talking about all the good times that they had with their mom such as going to the beach and then going to um, to the forest you know where they go straight to the waterfall you know just you know just swimming and and just um, taking a shower through the waterfall and all, and just have a picnic, and and then afterwards they go uh, fishing. So these are the loving, caring, heartwarming mo moments that you have in the film that actually, quite honestly, is the only best thing out of the whole entire mess of this film. And next thing you know, they woke up, finally in their own home, where the room is already a mess and everything. They got their pet iguana back and it seemed like everything was just normal. Like maybe they might have had a dream. But yep, their mom was back. I mean, they still say that yes, they're grounded and all. But next thing you know, they're, they're going to learn their lesson that this time they'll be good again and and they'll they'll listen to their mom and all of that and well hoping that this will be the best time they'll have for their lives and they'll never make these mistakes again <sighs> oy vey <laughs> 
I mean, I'm sorry. I know this movie had a cult following. I know there are people out there who love this movie as their childhood favorite. I mean, they watched it on the Disney Channel or any other network. Or even rented it on home video, like VHS. It's not even on DVD nor Blu-ray, but it had been getting the digital HD prints. Uh, they might have made some bootlegs too, obviously. But they were available from through Lionsgate, because Lionsgate owns the rights to this movie. Uh, whatever the case, it's still a bad family film, and I would not recommend it. I'm sorry. I mean, but if you love the movie, that's cool. But for people like me, as well as everyone else, who are smart enough for this, I would just avoid it. This movie has so many problems that I had, a lot of flaws that really went into. Um, the kids were incredibly spoiled, no doubt. Um, one of the Michigan brothers, at this rate, Asher, just can't act. I mean, I, I have trouble trying to understand some dialogue that he's about to say, but I know we were kids before. You know, we sometimes don't talk right. But this actor is just terrible. Um, I expected better from Anna Chomsky, though, because she's a very great actress, no doubt. She can act. This is just not her best performance that I've seen her in. Uh, Spacek tries the best she can do to play multiple characters, but at this rate, four. And she, she nails it. I'll say that. I mean, she, she wasn't bad. But it just seems like a waste. So I think she's just spending her entire field day just playing those characters exactly how she's doing it. Um, Moise Stapleton's alright, but apparently she's just there, you know, for her vice. You know, while she's just planning her gardening, just, you know, having to find out about some of her flowers that are changing. And ba basically she might have been the you know, the wizard right there, because she always, you know, bring in her magical spells, you know, while growing her flowers. The running gag, which I just mentioned, but I'm going to get into details now, is where the principal shows up for the appointment, and most of the time, even though he keeps showing back and forth over and over again, he, just waiting for their mom to show up, he's always getting covered with dust, covered with mud, getting dragged into things, and most of all, even towards the end of the movie, he gets caught in a trap through the treehouse, you know, already being hanged by a rope uh, through his leg, and he drops all these papers in his briefcase around, while the song um, by James Brown, you know the song, Wow! I feel good! Do, 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 do. I knew that I would now. I feel good! Incredibly bad slapstick gags that they had. And instantly goofy and cringing worthy too. Um, but that's nothing compared to the rest of the 82 minute run. Incredibly short too. I mean, it, it was a poorly paced children's fairy tale like story I mean how on earth did Nancy's daughter would actually come up with something like that it's beyond me <laughs> but I'm just glad that she didn't do anything else afterwards it's hard to t I know I'm, I'm getting really slow here my brain is like frying already just thinking about it um th then there's like some typical scenes too yeah like you know, smoking cigarettes and all. I, I mean, we get that drug use. Um, there's even a scene in the movie where the French mom, the the climax, where they were at the mummy market and that's where they pull all these gags and, and they're going around chasing them around and they're just, where well, they're all just, you know, thrown in with all these goofy slapstick here. Um, she got, sh I, I can't believe I'm seeing this, but a horse actually poops on her. And 
And then there's like... I don't know. It, it got so incredibly shallow. Uh, mean-spirited and all, and all, and... I mean, there isn't even a single likable person in this movie at this point on. If you can think about it, and... It got me so angry. Because the way they treated their mom and... And all the moms around, I mean, this is terrible. I really hated this so much. I, I, I would avoid this movie. I, I would rather watch Serial Mom over this. Hell, I rather watch North over this. Yeah, it's amazing why critics can pan and destroy that movie, where this movie, on the other hand, gets uh, a bit of a praise. But luckily, yeah, there are critics out there who did give it a negative review. I mean, Cisco and Ebert hated it. They put it on one of their worst lists. I would actually put it um, almost high above, but actually, National Born Killers uh, took over that spot. <laughs> but yeah, there was a lot of worse ones too. Um, and then, um, I know uh, Leonard Morrill didn't like the movie either, because of the way, you know, this was uh, treated. I mean, I don't, I just don't understand. I, really, I mean, but I think the real lesson to this whole movie here is that you're supposed to, no matter, even if your mom is bossy, and just nags at you all the time. What, what matters the most here is that you're supposed to care and love your mom no matter what happens, okay? Because otherwise, you know, you'll be better off all alone with no one to take good care of you. That's the whole purpose of the story. Oh. I don't want to deal with this anymore. So that's Trading Mom, and I think I would rather trade this movie for something else than this dreadful film. And I give the movie zero stars. Trust me, it's as horrible as it can be. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.